Hello engineers, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to discuss the DDPG algorithm and apply that algorithm on a Panda robot arm. We are going to train this robot on a reacher task where this robot has to learn to reach the position given by us as an input by moving its joints appropriately. Before starting, it is highly recommended that you have a slight background with reinforcement learning algorithms or you may have watched my previous videos on this same topic. I link those videos on the top right i button above and the description as well. All right, so now let us get to the technical discussion of the DDPG algorithm. DDPG or deep deterministic policy gradients is one of those algorithms in which we use the policy gradient methods instead of the value-based methods. In value-based methods like the deep Q learning algorithm, we utilize a value function to determine the optimal policy. In policy gradient methods, we directly operate over the policy to find the optimal policy. In reinforcement learning, we usually apply a lot of restrictions or assumptions to the environment in which our agent is placed in. One such constraint is on the action space. For simpler environments, we assume that the agent can only take discrete actions. However, there may be cases in which a continuous action may also be required. A simple example for this would be controlling the actuator position of the robot. The actuator position can be any continuous values given in a range. For discrete action values, the deep Q learning works really well, but it fails to work on the continuous action values. This is because the Q learning algorithm relies on the maximum function to compute the optimal policy. A maximum function is not easy to compute for a continuous action space. Hence, we use policy gradient methods like DDPG to directly learn the optimal policy for our agent. DDPG is overall a policy gradient technique but it utilizes some techniques from the value based methods as well. DDPG falls under the subcategory of actor critic algorithms. Starting from the general framework of the reinforcement learning problem where an agent has to take certain actions in the environment and receive rewards. The overall objective of the agent is to maximize the rewards that it receives by taking the optimal actions. In the case of actor critic algorithms, the agent is comprised of two entities which are the actor and the critic. The actor is responsible for taking actions in the environment and the critic is responsible for giving the feedback on that action to the actor. The critic takes in the reward that is received by the agent and modifies it to give a feedback signal to the actor. These two entities, actor and critic, can be any machine learning model, but for the general case, we use neural networks. The actor takes as input the current state of the agent and outputs the action that the agent can take. The critic takes in the state as well as the action that was generated by the actor. As an output, the critic returns us the goodness or the score of that action taken in that state. For the case of DDPG algorithm, the critic is responsible for learning the Q value and the actor is responsible for learning the policy. The Q value measures how beneficial it is for an agent to take an action in a given state. The policy is just a set of actions that the agent can take. So the goal now is for the actor to learn the Q value function and for the actor to learn the optimal policy. 
the complete process for this takes place as given over here. First, we have our state as an input to the actor network. The action generated by the actor network is passed to the critic along with the state as an input. The critic then finally generates a Q value for the state and the action pair. Once this Q value is generated, it is used to train or update the weights of the actor and critic network. The critic network is updated using the DQN loss and the actor network is updated using the policy gradient loss. Once this complete network has been trained, for the testing phase, we simply use the actor component of this algorithm. The actor is fed with the current state of the agent and the actor generates an action that the agent can take. To make the training stable, we use certain techniques in addition to the algorithm that we discussed. The first two techniques, the target networks and replay buffers are already used in the DQN algorithm. The mathematical expression of the DQN loss makes it quite difficult for the training to follow a stable path. Target networks are used to perform stable training. Instead of training the agent online on each observation that we receive from the environment, the observations are stored in a replay buffer. From this replay buffer, the observations are sampled and used as a batch for training this algorithm. This helps improve the efficiency of the training data and improves the convergence. The third additional technique used in this algorithm is to add some random noise to the action taken by the agent. To ensure proper training, reinforcement learning algorithms are required to explore as well as exploit the environment. Exploring ensures that the agent makes use of all the training data that is available in its environment. Exploitation ensures that the agent reinforces or finds the optimal policy in all the training data that it has discovered. Having a good balance of exploration and exploitation ensures that the robot does not learn any sub-optimal policy. To ensure proper exploration for the DDPG algorithm, a random Gaussian noise is added to the action that is generated by the actor. This modified action is then taken by the agent in its environment in the current state. Alright, so this is it that we had to discuss for the DDPG algorithm. Now let's see how this is applied to our environment. All the code that we are going to discuss is already present on Kaggle and the link to that would be present in the description below. For this simulation, we are going to use the Panda Gym Python library. This Python library is built on top of the open AI gym. It provides us with a lot of different environments in which we can train our robot. Here we can see we have the reach environment, the push environment, the slide environment, the pick and place environment and so on. So the first step is to install all the utility libraries. These libraries are going to help us render the simulation on this Kaggle notebook. After installing the libraries, we are going to build our gym environment. So here we are printing the first observation from the robot environment. As we can see, we have a six element vector representing the six degree of freedom of the panda robot arm. In the observation space, we also have the desired goal, which is just the position the robot and defector has to reach. First, we simulate the naive approach where we simply direct our motion towards the goal. So as we can see, the robot directly moves towards the goal that it has been given. 
Now let's apply the DDPG or Deep Deterministic Policy Gradient Algorithm on this environment. Here we are setting a number of different parameters for this algorithm. We are setting the parameters for the replay buffer and the actor critic networks. Then we are also setting the noise that we are going to use for our actions. One important thing to note is that instead of the original or naive implementation of the replay buffer, we are instead using the hindsight experience replay. For complex environments like these robot simulations, the reward engineering is quite a tough task. A simple reward strategy for this simulation can be the robot receives a reward whenever it reaches the goal position. However, this reward setting is quite sparse. And in this kind of sparse reward setting, it is quite difficult for the agent to completely explore its environment. The HGR buffer tackles this problem by replacing the actual reward with an appropriate reward achieved by the robot in the environment. For example, if the task of the robot was to reach this position, then if the robot is only able to reach this position, then a reward is given to this robot assuming that the goal was this position itself. In this way, this replay buffer reduces the amount of sparsity in the environment. Finally, once all these parameters are set in the DDPG algorithm, this algorithm is trained for 10 raised to the power of 6 time steps. After training, we test the robot on 10 different goal positions. As we can see, the robot has pretty much learned how to move its joints to reach a desired position. The same training can be done for different environments by varying the parameters that we passed in to the algorithm. Alright, so this is it that we had to discuss for this video. If you like the video, press the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos. And thank you for watching. Bye.